Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game by Mikhail Tull. And in the chess game Mikhail Tull has the white pieces and his opponent is Florencio Campomanes, who was also a chess organizer in his later life. And this chess game is from the FIDE Chess Olympiad from 1960. A pretty instructive and a beautiful chess game by Mikhail Tull. So let's check out what happened in this chess game. Tal starts the game with pushing the pull, c6, d4, and the Karakan defense, knight to c3, knight to f6, e5, knight from f to d7, and now Mikhail Tal pushed the pull, just for discombobulation and for being annoying, pushing the pawn and damaging the pawn structure, bishop to d3, knight to f6, knight to f3, pushing the pawn, and black is developing the knight, queen to e2, and bishop to g7, piancetto, bishop to d2, queen to c7, and Mikhail Tal castled from the queen side, pushing the pawn. Well, in this position, as you can see, Campomenes. Campomenes is threatening to push the pawn, forking the bishop and the knight. But what did Mikhail Tal do? Well, Mikhail Tal is not playing a defensive move, but Mikhail Tal didn't like to play passive moves. He didn't play any defensive moves, he played bishop to g5 and allowing e4. So in this position we have bishop to e6 by Campomanes. Actually pushing the pawn was the better move in this position. Simply pushing the pawn was better. And what was the idea of Mikhail Tal? Why is he sacrificing a piece? Knight takes on d5. Knight takes on d5, bishop takes on e4. Was the possibility. And in this position, as you can see, white has open files. Knight to f6. White sacrificed the piece, but created open files. And in this position, white also has two extra pawns. But is it worth it for sacrificing a piece? Maybe it is, against Campomanes. Mikhail Tal was the stronger player. But we can say that sacrificing a piece was extremely risky, but Mikhail Tal liked to gamble. So in this position Tal played bishop to g5 and Campomenes didn't push the pawn and he played bishop to e6 and knight to b5, defending the queen and h5 by Tal. Again, pushing the pawn is a possibility. But maybe in this position after capturing the piece, Mikhail Tal can get back the material because this bishop would be hanging. So, capturing a pawn. Is this a pawn sacrifice? Capturing the pawn with the knight was also a possibility. But Campomanes is captured back. G takes on h5 and Mikhail Tal played knight from f to d4. So if capturing the knight, queen takes bishop. Bishop to g4. And now pushing the pawn. If capturing the knight, queen takes on e6. So we have knight from f to d4 and bishop to g4. Pushing the pawn. Pushing the pawn and Mikhail Tal captured the bishop, exchanging, and now capturing the pawn, simplifying the game. And now Campoman is played knight to e4. Of course, in this position, if capturing the pawn, then checkmating the king, so knight to e4. And now knight to f5, defending the bishop, plus threatening checkmate. And knight takes on g7, a normal move by Mikhail Tal. Queen takes on g7. What would you do in this position? It looks like Campomanes is attacking the bishop. Where is the bishop going? Well, maybe defending the bishop comes to mind. But Mikhail Tal liked active chess and he captured the pawn. Rook takes on d5, sacrificing the bishop. Knight takes on g5. What was the idea of Mikhail Tal? What an incredible sacrifice. But if you noticed, the king is in the middle and not looking safe. So Mikhail Tal is going after the king and sacrificing the piece, moving the king and now checking the king once again. We have king to g6. Well, there are not many safe suckers for the king, so let's take it back. After checking the king, if moving the king, what happens if moving the king to the north? What happens in this position? Well then white has a very strong move and that is c6, pushing the pawn. Can you see the threat? 
Well, in this position, both threatening to capture the pawn, which is super dangerous, and also attacking the knight with the rook, and that is winning the queen. So b takes on c6, queen takes on c6, and where is the rook going? So in this position, rook to b8, and then what? Then queen to b7, and this was the idea of Mikhail Tell, and there are not many safe secures. So rook takes on b7, but now checking the kick, blocking. Rook from f takes on f8, and then rook takes on h8, and this is losing. So in this position, rook to f1, moving the king. And what is the next move of Mikhail Tell? Well, he is of course checking the king, moving the king. And now, rook to h1, and this was the final blow by Mikhail Tell. Attacking the king, and there is no reasonable defense. Threatening checkmate, rook takes on h5, and Kampomanes resigned. The only sensible defense, but then capturing the pawn. King to g7, and capturing the knight. And the queen is pinned, and this is losing. Capturing the queen, and you can figure out the rest. This is losing for Kampomanes. What a game. A beautiful and incredibly aggressive, risky chess game by Mikhail Tell. This is why we like the chess games of Mikhail Tell, because he plays risky, daring, attacking style. This was an another aggressive chess game by Mikhail Tell. He offered his pieces from left and right. Maybe his opponent should behave more brave. But this was the style of Mikhail Tell. He liked to take risks and he gambled all the time in his chess games. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.